Thank you for tuning in guys. In today's session, I'm going to talk about the secondary IP feature on most of the next generation firewall. How to configure the secondary IP on an interface and what are the real time scenarios where you can utilize the secondary IP feature. For the demonstration purpose, we have taken the 40 gate firewall to check this feature. And on my screen, as you can see, I have a 40 gate firewall configured with a port 2 with a scope 14140 slash 24. And scenario 1. Okay, this subnet will have the maximum number of hosts as 254. Imagine a scenario where I have exhausted the limit. There are no more IPs available in this network. So what I am going to do in this scenario? Well, I'm going to change the subnet mask probably to 16 or maybe something like it to accommodate the changes and to allow the new host. Well, this is not really feasible in, in a production environment because this will, this will, you know, allow another, this will force another device to have another configuration changes downstream to the fire. For example, if you change the subnet here below, firewall you might have some other device which will then require the changes according to the subnet mask that you have changed which is not feasible so in that scenario what you can do is you can create a secondary ip you can create a secondary scope and then you can get connected to the firewall using the secondary scope that you have created and you can go to the internet without any configuration changes on the firewall well, this is the first scenario. Second scenario is that you would like to segregate the traffic from multiple departments in your company. For example, this is IT. This is finance. And you might have another scope XYZ department. Okay, so now you have a segregation of traffic and you don't have to do a lot of changes on the firewall. Okay, you just have to add the scope. One more scope here. Okay, that's it, done. So this will not impact the current traffic on your firewall and it is just a minimal configuration on the firewall port to interface to accommodate these changes. Well, let's move on to the 40 gate firewall to check this feature, to enable this feature. So this is my 40 gate firewall and this is port two. And you can see there is a feature secondary IP address, which is disabled by default. Click on this and create a new scope for the IP address. And enable ping to test this. Now that we have a new scope, 1110 slash 30, save it. You can create multiple scope here, for example, so that you can utilize as per your scenarios. Click OK. Now that we have configured the secondary IP on port two, let's move 
on to the firewall. Let's move on to CLI. This is okay. Consider this as a host. I have another uh, host in the same network as 14, 140, 40, 108. And for simplicity, I have taken the ports in the same VLAN, which is VLAN 2, so that I don't have any issues connecting to the firewall and testing the secondary IP feature. Okay, so this is my host one, let's say, and I'll try to reach out to the interface primary scope, which is 14140040 zero slash 24. This is the interface IP. And I'm able to ping that. That is obviously possible when you try to configure the IP on the interface and enable the ICMP. Now let's move on to the host number two, which is our seven CentOS host. If you see the ETH1, one, which is the second interface, it is having the IP address 1112. And it is in the same VLAN, okay? And having the network 1110 slash 24. Okay, I guess it is not 24 by mistake. I've given 24. Let's try to change it to 24. No problem. We can change that to 24. Or else we can keep it that way. Just keep in mind that whenever you're doing this changes, the downstream host should be in the same network. Okay, moving on to our host two, which is having the IP 1112 slash 30, same as what we have on the firewall slash 30. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try pinging the 111 from ETH1. As you can see, I'm able to ping this and this is happening simultaneously. For example, if I go to host one, host one is still able to reach out to the primary scope. Host two is still able to reach out to the secondary scope. And in the same way, what I can do is I can go ahead and change the scope to 3331 or 3332 and then try to connect to firewall. And that should probably that should also work so let me show you that as well so right now you are see, you're seeing primary scope which is the port 2 interface ip i'm able to ping from host 1 this is host 2 secondary scope able to ping the interface on the firewall Let's try to configure the third scope to test the secondary IP feature. So now I'm going to change it to three. So I've changed the scope on the second host, as you can see here, three 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 two on the forty gate firewall. I still have the third scope. 3331 slash 30. As you can see, I'm still able to ping that. And there is no issues on my first primary scope. 
and it is working simultaneously. Well, this is the advantage of secondary IP. And I've shown you how to configure the secondary IP on 40 gate firewall. And the configuration is also available in my blog. So I'll put the link in the description for you to copy the configuration. And in the blog, I have given the subnet as slash 24. But then I have configured slash 30. So probably I'll, I'll do the changes on the blog and then I'll republish it. But then that was the primary function of secondary IP feature on the firewall. And you can utilize this feature to accommodate multiple uh, scopes. And like I said, there are multiple scenarios where you would require the secondary IP feature on the interface. All right, guys, uh, that's all in this video. And if you would like to have another uh, tutorial on secondary IP on another firewalls like Palo Alto, Juniper SRX, do let me know in the comment section. I will cover uh, them as well in the next video. All right, then please do subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. Stay safe. Have a good day.